After it is designed, but before it can be occupied, a building must be constructed. This is the story of the construction of Paul Milstein Hall at Cornell University. It's July 9th, 2009. Milstein Hall is finally underway. But before the actual construction begins, a number of things need to happen. Roads and driveways into and adjacent to the site are closed. This includes the access drive between Sibley and Rand Halls, leading to Lincoln Hall, which will not be rebuilt after construction is completed. Instead, what was a road will become a covered pedestrian path under the second floor of Milstein Hall. A new temporary access drive is built connecting Lincoln Hall to East Avenue. This drive will be rebuilt at the same location once construction is completed. University Avenue, between Sibley Hall and the Foundry, will remain in operation after construction is complete, but for now is closed to traffic to be used as a staging area for construction. Of course, the parking lot behind Sibley Hall is closed, since this is the site of Milstein Hall itself. In addition, the parking area behind Jaden Hall is closed so that contractor and construction management trailers can be set up. Recycling areas for construction are placed between the trailer area and the construction site. Recycling of construction debris is required for LEED certification. With University Avenue closed, a temporary road network is created on the Arts Quad in front of Sibley and Jaden Halls, mainly for emergency vehicular access. Meanwhile, trees are cut down where they would interfere with construction, and the entire site is fenced off, both to protect the construction process from people and to protect people from the construction process. The first task, before the actual construction or even the excavation of the site can occur, is to extend the foundations of Rand and Sibley Halls, at least those parts of their foundations that will be immediately adjacent to Milstein Hall, to a deeper level. This process is called underpinning, and it is necessary since the excavated pit for Milstein Hall would otherwise be lower than the existing foundations of Rand and Sibley, an unstable situation as this excavated area would no longer offer resistance against the lateral pressure exerted by the higher footings. But underpinning is not an easy thing to do, as it really involves a radical inversion of the normal construction sequence. Instead of placing the building superstructure on top of a foundation, these workers need to insert a foundation under a superstructure that is already there. This can only be done bit by bit, piece by piece, in a slow, careful manner. If too much soil is removed at any given time below the existing building, the weight of the superstructure over that void could cause unwanted settlement or even collapse. In fact, there has been some minor movement in the superstructure of Sibley Hall as a result of the underpinning. Cracks in masonry arches have appeared or existing cracks have widened as the masonry has moved slightly outward into the Milstein excavation. Such are the risks of underpinning near old masonry structures. In any case, the cracks are within the tolerances allowed for in the specifications, and Sibley Hall seems to have stabilized, with no further movement expected. There is a large sewer pipe under the access drive adjacent to Rand Hall. This must be moved to accommodate the construction of Milstein Hall. Unfortunately, there is no good place to put it, as Milstein Hall occupies the entire area between Rand and Sibley Halls. It is decided to relocate it under Rand Hall, which has no basement in the area next to the access drive. Rather than digging up Rand Hall's floor deck, a large diameter hole is actually drilled horizontally under Rand, a bit lower than this one. The new sewer pipe is then inserted into this lower hole and propped up until the area can be backfilled. There are several other temporary relocations that are completed before the construction of Milstein Hall begins. A so-called Siamese connection for Rand Hall's automatic fire sprinkler system, which allows fire department personnel to connect pressurized water hoses if needed, must be moved to a location where fire department vehicles can actually gain access during construction. So, a temporary pipe is extended up and around Rand Hall, close to the intersection of University and East Avenue, which remains open to traffic. 
and a temporary high voltage line is suspended above the site in the area between Rand and Sibley Hall. Once these temporary moves have been made and the foundations of Rand and Sibley have been underpinned, the excavation of the site for Milstein Hall can proceed. So-called soldier beams are driven into the earth and wooden lagging is inserted between the vertical soldiers as the site is excavated, holding back the earth behind. In fact, holes are drilled into the earth behind the lagging so that steel tiebacks can be inserted deep into the earth. The hole is then grouted solid with concrete and the ends of the tiebacks are fastened to horizontal steel beams spanning from soldier to soldier. In this way, Lateral soil pressure on the retaining structure is resisted by the tiebacks acting in tension. With the wall secured and the site excavated, construction of the substructure can now begin.